What is up guys, JP Tech here, and this is the Puerto Rican living in Japan, talking about camera reviews, how-to videos, tech, and all that good stuff. In this channel, we always talk about how to make the best use of what we got for cheap or better yet, free. And today, do I have a video for you guys. I'm gonna be showing you how to convert, how to resize all your squished DNG files that come out of the EOS M and the MLV app in DaVinci Resolve. And that only happens when you shoot in the one by three aspect ratio, meaning the anamorphic um, aspect ratios, or the one by the three by three, which is the 1080p mode, or the one by one, which is like the 3K and the 2.8K, 2.5Ks. Those modes shoot in their native resolution, so you don't lose the aspect ratio. Only the anamorphic ones, you do get a funky kind of a export. So we really have to have a workaround or know the, the correct adjustment, the attributes to correctly size the clip to look like what it was meant to look like. Now, if you want to avoid this whole mess, you could just export from MLV to the ProRes but that defeats the purpose of shooting with the Canon ESM. We want to shoot and keep the raw DNG files. So that's why we're going to need the cheat code that I'm showing you guys today. Let me just get my notes right here. I got the cheat codes right here. Now, even though I'm going to be running down through all these aspect ratios and what size sizing inputs we need to put in DaVinci Resolve, uh, I'll just leave everything in the description down below so you could just copy and paste and use as you like. I'm going to go through down through the aspect ratios, not so much the size because you could choose the highest or high or medium setting and that as that affects the resolution, but it doesn't affect the aspect ratio. So that's why we're just going to run down through the three ultra wide aspect ratios that Canon ESM the Magic Lantern has. So so let's get started with the most popular aspect ratio is the 2.35 by 1. All right, guys, so now that we're here in the Vinci Resolve inside, we're going to fix the aspect ratio. As you can see, everything is all squished. So what we got to do is heading over. Actually, you could do this in three different ways. You could do it on the cut space, the edit space, and also the color page or space. I forget what DaVinci calls these. I believe they're workspace. Yep, they're the workspace. All right. But um, first of all, let me show you in the cut sp space. Um, here in the cut page, we can go over to video, transform, and under zoom, you're able to fix the resolution here. And uh, before you do anything, you got to make sure you unlock the lock aspect ratio, because if you don't, when you make any adjustments, it's going to adjust both the X and the Y axis. So you want to make sure that it is unlocked. So then you put the attributes that I'm about to show you. For the aspect ratio of 2.35 by 1, we want to first head to our X and put a 2.270. And actually, you don't even have to type the O. It's going to do it by itself. Press Tab and tab again to head over to the Y area and just start typing right away. It's really quick to do it. So next thing you want to do, the attribute is period, which automatic is, is going to add the zero automatically. So period seven, five, six, press enter. And there you go. It is fixed. We have our nice 2.35 by one aspect ratio all fixed. And that's how you do it here on the cut page. I would actually recommend you doing this in the edit page is better or even the color page. And the reason is because on the edit page, you're able to copy the attributes and paste them into different clips. Say you have another uh, two by 35 clip. So you could come over here and if this clip, um, let's reset that, you can actually right click and paste the attribute or just hit the command V and select your zoom X Y hit apply and you could apply them to all the clips that you might select and that way you could do them all at once or if you're in the color page 
there is another way to fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this one. Head over to the color page. Again, same 2.35 by 1 aspect ratio clip. And if you go under the timeline, there are going to be some of the settings. So you want to head over to the sizing setting right here, the input size. You have your width and height right there. So go ahead and double click the width and do the same attributes as I told you before, 2.27 hit tab and hit tab again to move over to the height and then just keep typing away 0.756 and hit enter there we go our resolution is fixed and you could actually copy these settings over to your next clip by hitting shift equal to apply the edit from the prior clip but as you can see, we're in a two by 20 aspect ratio. So that's the next resolution we're going to fix. So we're just going to stick in the color page. I like to do it here because I just do everything. I do all my grading as well as the input sizing all in one place. So we're just going to keep going this way. Up next is a 2.20 by one aspect ratio. We got 5K. You could also shoot in 4.6K and 4.2K. And doesn't matter, they're all the same aspect ratio. So the attributes for these is actually gonna be 2.423, hit tab, hit tab again, and then 0.81, hit enter. There we go. And then two by one, we get even more. We do lose some of that width, but we gain in height. So let's go ahead and head over to the two by one. Double click our width, and that is going to be a 2.670. Oh, but I don't have to type O. Oh, just hit tab, hit tab again, double tap, and the height is 0 0.890, but we don't need the zero. Just hit enter. Automatically applies all our zeros. And there you go. Two by one aspect ratio. This is very close to a DCI by Fujifilm. So it works well with that, matches well with DCI up next is the one if you really want to fill up the screen 16 by 9 is a typical wide monitor then this is the easiest one to fix width is basically just three that's it just type three hit enter bam you got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio right there and that is it guys um pretty much it uhd is the same thing it's a 16 by 9 so double click it hit three press enter bam you fill up the whole screen with the raw goodness now like i told you in the intro this only works for the one by three aspect ratio or the anamorphic style um, modes really need to be adjusted the 3x3 three three or the 1080p doesn't need it. As you can see, the 1080p is right there. This is the full resolution, doesn't need any adjustments. But if you want to crop those sidebars instead of going with a 3x2, yeah, all you got to do is crop into a 1.186, hit enter, and there you go. It actually, oh yeah, I forgot, we need to do it on both. 1.186 because this is shot in a square. So yeah, we gotta zoom in. Oh, well, you know what? Even better, since we just need to zoom, we don't need to stretch anything. You could actually use the zoom. So let's go ahead and do that with the zoom. 1.186 and bam. We even got space to go up or down. You know, we could shift the uh, vertically up and down since we shot in a square. And there you go, we got a 16 by nine look style. The other modes, the one by one mode, which it means the 3K modes, they don't need them. As you can see, they're already in their native resolution, so we don't have to do any cropping, anything to them. Um, just color and edit, that's it. Now, of course, guys, all of these attributes will be posted in the description. Feel free to use them, copy them, save them in your notes app, use them as you like. And I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If anyone knows an easier way to have all of these presets saved in DaVinci Resolve, please let me know, you know, if whether there is an option to save these uh, sizing input in the color space or something, maybe make a lot of it. I have no idea, but if DaVinci allows us to do that, 
please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know because it's kind of tedious to have to do this every time we import DNG files or work with DNG files in DaVinci Resolve. So again, guys, let me know if there's any mistake that I have mentioned throughout this video, but hopefully not too many. And yeah, most of all, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Now, if you did find this video helpful, educational, I would appreciate your thanks by smashing that like button, sharing the video and subscribing because if you guys are into Magic Lantern, Canon ESM, Raw videos, as well as Fuji World, then this is the right place to go. I love talking about camera videography and of course, you know, trying to make the best out of what we got for cheap or better yet for free. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.